I doing guys today we're digging through the uh, sheet metal poop bin underneath my workbench for a piece of sheet metal that I can use in order to continue finishing up the seat pan project for the little mule so heading outside and basically what I'm looking to do today is I'm looking to fill in these little crevices these little this little jog that I got in the uh, fender versus the extension piece. So what I did was I found this piece of steel. I'm gonna have to show you a little crazy angle here, but it looks like that will work just fine. And it's thin enough where I can make an arc out of it so it'll follow the seat pan real nice. And then I can just tack that in, grind it down, and be done with that part of it. So let me just go ahead, trim this up, and we'll get that in place, and I'll show you what it looks like just before I weld it in. Okay, so I have the, the little patches loosely affixed in place by the magnets. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and tack them into place. Um, and then what I'll, next I'll do is I'll drop a line for the arc. And then I'll either, I'll cut, probably cut this off with the uh, tin snips a little bit. And then I'll go in there with the air sander and bring it into shape. So let me go ahead and get those tacked into place, get these stupid magnets out of the way and then we'll see what kind of damage I did. Alright so this particular patch is all burnt in uh, just needs to be ground down and then shaped but on this side I actually did the grinding on it and as you can see it came out pretty darn good. I'm, I'm real happy with the way that came out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grind the other side this side right there and then I'll drop a line. It looks like we get Looks like I could have maybe touched this with the welder right there, but I'm going to drop a line on it first, see where I want to grind it to, and then if I need to just touch up the, the weld real quick, I will. But essentially, that's where we are right now. In order to get the uh, general feel of the arc that I want, I, I went ahead and I made a quick little drawing of the edge of the original seat pan from the 857. I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to use this as my preliminary pattern to figure out how I want to grind the other or the stretched pan so that way it looks semi normal it kind of looks the part and kind of hides also that it's been stretched. I just dropped the line onto the uh, onto the fender pan essentially what I do is I lined up the corner the outer corner here with the edge and then just came across just using my marker. So you can see like a good 90% of this welded on piece of steel is going to be taken off. The actual weld line is right there. Uh, so I am going to, you know, keep a good portion of it. Now obviously you can see where the weld line is on this one. Let me turn this around. So if I go ahead and line that line up a little bit with the edge. There we go. You can see that it's going to be, it's going to be pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on the outside of the line. I think I'm just going to take my tin snips and cut that off. And then I'll take the air sander and just kind of bring it right to where I want it to be. I think the edges came out pretty nice. Those little patches just made it just right for, for the look. I'm real happy with that way that came out. Now they're not perfect, but... You know, once I do a little bit of body filler, sand it down, prime paint it, you'll never know that that has been messed with. The, uh, the back section is all shaped out. That looks real nice. I'm real happy with that. Again, a little bit of body filler here and there just to fill in those weld areas. And everything should line up real good. The only thing I'm going to work on now is the last modification to the sheet metal is this one for some reason the the hole for the belt guard is a little bit bigger than the original 857 so I'm just going to go ahead and add a little piece of steel right in this area we'll shape it all out and we'll make that also disappear that's what's up next with the belt guard patch in place I think that looks really good now granted it needs a little adjustment here and there so I mean this isn't exactly where it's going to be, but if I have to just sand that down a little bit, just to give myself a little bit more relief, I could totally do that. Because on this side, yeah, I'm, I'm right up against the, the tower, so, you know, a little bit more. But that's all going to change once I get the, uh, once I get the seat stay, uh, 
put back in place. Yeah, that's better. That's a little bit better relief. I might have to, I got this little washer there just to keep it straight. Um, but overall, I'm real happy with this. So it was just a little bit of work this morning to get this thing dialed in, or dialed in enough where I'm pretty happy with it. I think the lower edges where I put those little patches over here in the corner, I think those look really good. They almost look identical. They're a little different, but you know, unless you just do what, exactly what I did, you're never gonna really know, so. All right, so the next step is to pull out the seat stay. That, that's what spot welded inside the pan itself. Gonna pull that out, start cleaning that thing up. Uh, I do have to do a little fix it work to it, and we'll get it. We'll get that thing attached. So let me get out this uh, seat stay. Let's take a look at it and figure out what needs to be done. So here's the seat stay that's spot welded to the bottom of the pan, and as you can tell, it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, a lot of surface rust, a lot of dirt, a lot of grime, but essentially, it's in pretty good shape. The it has the classic bent uh, bent front section, I guess you call it. So I'll have to straighten that out. I'll have to get some new rubber bumpers. This side is a little bit tweaked, so I'll have to straighten that out. But the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything is I'm going to run this thing over the wire wheel and just get it all cleaned up or 85% cleaned up, so that way it's a little easier to work on. Uh, one thing I am going to do is I am going to weld a piece of steel along this edge to strengthen this up because this is where all these are this is the point or the two point contact where it meets up with the uh, lower uh, steering tower so there's a lot of there's a lot of force sitting on that and then obviously this is the hinge part that hooks up to the back of the uh, of the tractor uh, so let me get this cleaned up and then what we'll do is we'll start talking about what we're going to do in order to mount it back into the seat pan with the seat stay a wire wheeled and then I just hit it with the die grinder a little bit just to clean it up just to get it ready for some uh, some fix its what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld all the holes that are in it shut um, actually you can see the holes better in this position uh, that way I'm starting off with something fresh and I can re-drill it in where I want it for the spot welds the other thing I did was I cut this piece of band iron and I cut it to fit really nice actually I'm highly impressed with myself I didn't think it was going to come out this nice but I fit it just right so I'm going to weld it into the bottom section of this seat stay and what that's going to do is you know rectify the situation where these always bend and in warp from the weight of somebody sitting on it because it's just these two little points uh, that holds all the weight of the seat pan there you know the, obviously the rider of the seat bouncing around so right here and here this thing tends to just you know warp really bad and I straightened it out it's fairly straight so I'm going to weld this piece into here I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld the ends on the exterior and then I'll just put like maybe three beads on the back side, maybe like one here, one in the middle, and one on the other side. And that piece of band iron will definitely strengthen that up enough where we're not going to see any more warpage. Uh, from there, I will then start to do the layout to spot weld it into the seat pan. With the support bar welded into place, I, I just welded the front sides here real quick. Hit them with the... Uh, air sander to make it smooth and what am I doing um, <laughs> sorry there we go I just put a couple little beads of weld in there just to keep everything straight it shouldn't I mean I don't know I don't foresee that ever bending again if it does I probably have bigger problems than what that bar could save the other thing I did was, I met, I probably should have used a better marker for this also, that mark, all my Sharpies are dead, that's the only one I have left. I measured up the center of each uh, piece of sheet metal, and I about approximately every three inches, I made a, a little divot with my set for the drill bit, because uh, I'm going to drill about five quarter inch holes in each side. Those will be the places where I'll do the spot welds to the bottom of the seat pan. But prior to doing all of that, I'm going to drill probably this hole and one of the front holes 
all the way through, obviously, and through the seat pan. That way I can bolt it together, put it on the tractor, make any little adjustments that I need, and then bolt it down real tight and then go ahead and spot weld everything in place. So that way this thing doesn't move or doesn't get lined up correctly when I go to spot weld it. So let me get the drilling and getting this thing bolted into place. With all of the holes drilled in the seat stand or the seat stay, um, I've laid it out on the uh, seat pan. I've made some marks and some measurements to get it as close as possible. Now I'm gonna drill this hole through the seat pan and the front hole through the seat pan. So I could take two bolts or nuts and washers, I should say, that are a little bit smaller than quarter inch and bolt this down to the seat pan. I will then take it out to the tractor, physically mount it on the tractor. And if I need to make a couple tweaks, I can just loosen up one or, one or both the bolts, make some tweaks here and there. So that way the seat pan lines up perfectly on the tractor. Once I got that all done, I'll tighten up those bolts nice and tight, take the seat pan off the tractor, and then go back and actually hit each one of the spot welds. Now, where I have the holes and the bolts, obviously I'll weld both sides of the uh, pan. That way I can fill the hole on this end and fill the hole on the top side. And there, the seat stay will be back in where it needs to be, as well as adjusted based on all this modification. So that way the seat pan sits nice and perfect on the back of the tractor. So let me go ahead, drill this off, and then let's get it mounted on the tractor. As you expect from time to time with my projects, change of plans. Before I take it out to the tractor to go ahead and bolt the seat stay into place, I decided to go ahead and strip the paint out of the inside of the seat pan. That way I can go ahead and DA sand this all down, get it all cleaned up. Same thing with the uh, seat stay, get that all cleaned up, bolt it down and then be done with it. So that way I won't have to take it on and off. I can just bolt it down, uh, you know, bolt it down, line it up and then go ahead and weld it in place. But as you can tell, the rust is, is pretty severe underneath all of the paint. So I'm glad that I am pulling the paint off. I went to Home Depot be, just to get some paint stripper. I guess with the uh, virus, paint stripper is at a premium because uh, this was the only thing that they had and this stuff actually really sucks. Uh, it's taken a lot of time in order to get bit into this paint and get it off. So I'm going to continue working on this first to get this cleaned up and then I'm going to DA sand the center of this down with like 40 grit to get it clean. Uh, I will do the same with the seat stay uh, in order to get it ready to be spot welded into place. This is the part that I absolutely hate. The waiting for this stuff to bite in. I'm too darn impatient. With the seat stay uh, loosely bolted into place, I am very happy with the alignment of the pan. It's just a few, you know, a few 30 seconds of an inch off here and there. But overall, with the seat stay bolted to the bottom of the pan, the pan uh, and then the seat stay bolted to the tower, or the seat stand here, I'm real happy with the way this looks. The tires are centered in the wheel wells on both sides, which is good. Let's take a look on this one. I think you'll see that it is. Yeah, looks good. And it appears to be nice and level and even from the rear. So I'm real happy with that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and spot weld the seat stay to the bottom of the pan. And then we'll start doing some layout on the uh, bumpers for the front. There's a two, two rubber bumpers on the inside. There's a little bracket that needs to be re-welded on both sides. So we'll get that done. With it all spot welded into place, it looks, it's real strong, it's real nice. Everything looks like I had good weld penetration. It burnt through to the other side. I filled in the holes very nicely or as nice as possible on either end. So the screw holes are gone. Everything seems to have lined up real nice. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that all works out. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and 
spot weld these uh, tabs, the rubber locators. Uh, I'm going to put this one back in the stock position. I believe that's not it. It's this one here. There it is. Beautiful, right? All right. So there. So that one goes back in there. And then once I get this one in, I'll take some measurements and then just correspond the measurements on this side. Now, obviously, I can't use the stock location where this was because I added this little piece in so it would meet up to the belt guard better. So I'll just, I'll just, you know, whatever the distance is from here to, to the edge, I'll just replicate that on this one. Kind of vice grip it into place, spot weld it. I'm just going to clean up all the paint front and back with the die grinder, clean out the drill marks so that way I can get a good... Uh, a good weld spot weld those in and then I'm hoping I'm gonna see I haven't talked to my buddy that has the machine shop in a, a while with this whole virus situation so I'm gonna go and meet up with him maybe today and maybe sweet talk him in the sense of letting me use his sandblasting booth because unfortunately mine is way too small to fit this in there his is, is, is large. You've seen it in prior videos. It's, it's a big one. It'll fit this thing without any problem. So, all right. So let me get the cleaning and spot welding, and let's see if we can get over there. And there it is. All the fabrication is finally completed. Um, <laughs> it took a while to get here, but, you know, I think the rough results are uh, quite quite pleasing. I mean, I'm really happy with the way it came out. The tops of the fenders look great. The front looks great. I got the uh, the bumper tabs all spot welded into place. Um, let me spin it around real quick. I'll take a look at the back. I think the back looks really good. I mean, it's a little rougher than the front, but that's because I had to have these little pieces here. But, you know, once these are all uh, body filled in and sanded smooth. This is going to, I think it's going to look real nice. The center section is darn near mint. There's, there's really no dents. The sides of the fenders look really good. And if we take a look at the underside one more time, let's turn this over. I mean, it all looks just fine. You can take a look at the tabs. The tabs are all spot welded in nice and smooth and clean. So with that, I think I'm going to call this video done. Coming up is the actual finish work on this. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to sandblast this thing, get it all good and clean. We'll etch prime it and start doing the body work on it. Ultimately to prime it and then we'll figure out what we're going to paint it. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for your support, your nice comments. And as always, please like, share and subscribe if you could, please. And have a nice day. Thanks, guys. Bye.